Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am trying some new angles, trying some things with better lighting uh, because I felt like my video quality was being really sucky. So we are trying some things. So, welcome back to my channel, I guess. Hi, hello, how you doing? I'm wearing a dress, which I don't know if the vlog or haul thing came out before this, but if it did, it's that dress. If not, well, it's a dress that you'll see eventually. Hopefully. So. It's a video you'll hopefully see eventually. So. Today's video. Is going to be my singing and acting tip video thing. Uh, or just things that I found helpful that maybe other people might find helpful. I don't know. Because I feel like some of this I would have. Like you know some of it is a little bit common sense. Not going to lie. Uh, but I feel like, you know, it could be helpful to someone who is, uh, starting off and would like some assistance. So I have a little list, a list on my phone here. So I will tell you them. So the first one, which is kind of obvious, I guess, is to practice a lot. Now, I know that is really time consuming and I know it can be annoying because trust me, I know it's annoying and especially if you're someone who has uh, a bit more of a social life than I do and you like to hang out with people or go out, a lot of that is not going to happen anymore because you're going to be busy having to practice and going to have to know your lines and your cues and your staging and all of these other things um, that come with, you know, acting. And now uh, my experience mainly has been uh, like stage acting. I was sort of in a movie, but we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about that because I don't like bringing it up. So I'm not gonna talk about it any more than that. So <laughs> not gonna talk about that. And it wasn't even professional, really, quite honestly. And if those people are seeing this, I'm sorry. I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> um. So yeah, just reading it. Uh, all the time reading things you know even if you get someone to run them with you or you record yourself saying the other lines that can help too um so vocal warm-ups slash just warm-ups in general because your your voice is a muscle and you use it a lot and you know uh with like singing specifically sometimes you're singing higher than your normal voice and or lower than your normal voice depending on like where you can sing um i'm a soprano too if that means anything to you um but like i can sing fairly high but i can also sing pretty low too uh so i don't know i don't remember like exactly what notes my range is uh anymore but i did used to know so you know that can be helpful uh for like singing things and auditions if you know if you're like a alto soprano bass tenor whatever and sometimes if there's like more harmonies um sometimes you'll need to know if you're a soprano one or soprano two to know like how high or how low you can sing it's all just about ranges basically so doing the warm-ups helps a lot because it makes your voice a lot clearer um and it can cause like you know less uh voice cracks and um, it sounds a lot more crystal clear and like you can hit things higher and better in my experience. Like I find that I usually can sing better when I do vocal warm-ups than when I don't. Um, because it also causes less strain on your voice because it's already warmed up and it's already ready to do that. So it's already like used to it. And then just like normal warm-ups um, like helps with nerves. Um, and like stretching so that, like your body doesn't hurt because sometimes depending on what you're doing you could be like cramped on stage or whatever type of acting you're doing um, there was one time I was acting and I was on like this fake boat and I had to be like smothered under blankets basically and I had like people like on top of me and holding me um, so you can be in some like confined spots so sometimes the like stretching or uh, like the, the countdown and shaking one that's good to like 
get your uh, like hands and your feet moving. It also helps to get rid of like some anxiety and stress. Um, I do find them helpful, specifically the counting ones and like the breath exercises, because um, those also help with your lungs and your breath control. So those are also very very helpful. So um, I definitely would recommend doing those. And even if like you know nobody else wants to do them or it's not like a group activity, which usually it is, you can even just do it yourself and maybe people will join you or maybe they won't. And you know what? It's totally fine. If they don't want to join you, you're doing this to benefit yourself, not to benefit other people. And I know it can be embarrassing because some of them are kind of embarrassing. I'm well aware, but they are really helpful. So don't let embarrassment like take over the fact of making you perform better. Because not everybody gets it. Okay? It's not for everybody. Um I personally find moving while you're memorizing your lines and practicing is helpful. Like, when I'm typically practicing my lines or running lines myself, uh, I like to like walk back and forth, like kind of pacing, sort of, because um, I find that helps me memorize it better. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, sorry. The guy across the street from me has opened up his curtain, so now he can see me filming. Great, anyways. Um, but yeah, I personally find like pacing helps me uh, memorize my lines better, and especially it helps with uh, trying, like if you're, if whatever you're saying, if you're moving while you're saying it, it can also help with like how many breaths you have to take, or like what kind of movements you're doing while you're talking. Um, that can be helpful too. I don't know. I, I've i been doing this for like, I don't know, like I talked about it in my get to know me video. Like I've been acting for a while. I'm not saying like experience is everything because it's, it's really not. And it's kind of sad that in the industry, like no matter how much experience you have, it's based on a whole lot of other things. Um, but I do have a lot of experience. So <laughs> This is where I got a lot of these things from because I've done it and people have told me over the years uh, that these are things you should do. So I do know some things. I'm not saying that I'm an expert by no means, but hey. Um, but yeah, I've been doing that for like at least three years, walking back and forth memorizing lines. Like, and it's really dumb too. Like, you know, you can be sitting down, but some reason I feel like in for my brain and the way that my brain works, like moving helps me get it better. Weird. Anyways, that's just that's just another tip. Um, oh. Talk with your fellow performers or your team or your teachers, whatever like people you're doing it with, talk with them. Because if there is like issues you're having or you need some advice on like uh how to like memorize your lines better or you're worried about something they can help you and if you're like hey I'm really struggling with this certain part of the script can you like help me get through it or walk me through it or tell me what you would do uh, they will help and uh, it's really good to do like team bonding exercises too with your uh, like cast and your crew if you know you don't really know them already um, uh, like for example when you're For example, one year when I was doing uh, acting at my high school, uh, a bunch of like the casting crew for our show went bowling, and then we went to McDonald's after. So uh, you know that was kind of really great because I didn't know a lot of them because I was a grade 10 and they were all like grade 12s and 11s. Uh, so that made me get to know them a little bit better, and they got them to get to know me a little bit better. So then it kind of opened up better lines of communication, so that you know if there was something going on you could talk with them. So I would really recommend that um, because I know from experience that personally I am usually absolutely terrified to talk to people, especially if I don't know them. But in cases like that where you, if you need help or you want to understand something or something doesn't make sense, that is like crucial <laughs> that you talk to someone. Um, because I have had those moments and there's been times where I was like, this is really long. I don't know if I'm going to be able to know it all. And they'll be like, okay, if that comes out the case, we can figure something out for you. So they will be understanding. And if not, that's weird, because they should be understanding. 
especially if you're like a minor or you're younger even if you're not younger they should still be understanding because we're all human like not everybody is like a robot can just know everything and not mess up um drink lots of water uh i <laughs> i don't do this i really don't uh but it does help it does help with your voice a lot um and as someone who talks and sings 24 7 I'm pretty sure if I drank more water, I probably would have less of a sore throat, and I could probably perform ten times better than I do. Um, but yeah, drink lots of liquids. Uh, not anything dairy, because they usually can uh, constrict and like cause congestion in your throat, which can affect your voice. Um, but yeah, if you just drink lots of fluids, specifically water, uh, you you should be good. It, and it does help. It does. It does actually help. So you know, learn from what I don't do so that you can be better than me. That didn't make sense, but we're gonna go with it, apparently. Uh, oh, okay, so this is, this is so, so, so important. And a lot of people, this is kind of like what intimidates people, I would say, about like getting into acting or singing or performing, whatever you want to call it, um, is the fact of messing up. I, myself, have messed up many, 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 many times. And I have been performing for a long time. I have messed up. I've done it. And everyone always says I'm so good. And it's like, Emma, you're so good. Like, how are you so good at doing this? Like, like you know, I, and I'm not just saying this. Like, you know, like I've had multiple uh, people say this to me. Like, not, not just my family or my friends. Like, I've had random strangers tell me this. Old ladies <laughs> told me this, um, but I'm not perfect. I'm not the best by any means. Um, I have messed up on multiple occasions, but nobody's ever noticed, and that's how it's supposed to be. If you mess up, you just go for it. If you forget a line, you somebody will say something or improvise. As long as you kind of get your point across to maybe if that's a cue for someone else or cue for something else, as long as you improvise, or somebody else says it for you if you forget, it's fine. You just have to make the audience not know. And that might sound intimidating, but as long as the audience doesn't know, you still got a perfect show. But if you, but if you like, you know, if I just did that, everyone would notice. You all noticed that I stopped talking. You all noticed that I, like, you know, maybe I didn't know what I was gonna say next. Like. And now I'm editing this and so I can fix that and if this was filmed they could you know fix that but when you're live on stage nobody can just be like oh yeah let me just cut this part out like people are watching you there at that exact moment so if you mess up don't just stop and be like oh shit I messed up no you gotta like improvise keep going make up things if you have to like don't stop. That's all I can say. And if you say if you sing the wrong part of the song, just keep going. You can circle back. It's fine. It's fine. As long as your viewers and your audience don't notice, you're still good. Like the time every single time I've messed up, I've been like, oh shit. After the show, I'm like, oh damn, I messed up. Like I feel so shitty about it. And you probably will. And then like I've talked to people that watch the show and they're like, I had no idea you messed up. Like, what are you talking about? Like you did not mess up. So, trust me. If you mess up, as long as you cover it, nobody will notice. Um, so, you know, remember that. That is, if that, if you take anything from this, take that, if you mess up, it doesn't actually mean that you messed up. The only way that you mess up is if the audience notices, really. I would think in my brain. Like, to me, like, I've, I've forgot lines. I straight up, like, there's one specific time I was younger, I was probably like, I don't know, 12 maybe? Could have been younger than that. Um, and I totally forgot my line. Didn't even know I had a line there. And one of my uh, fellow actors said my line for me. And it was best kind. Like, nobody knew. Nobody knew. I mean, I didn't even know until afterwards. I was like, oh my god, that was supposed to be my line. And I forgot. So, as long as something is similar, or somebody says it for you, or you come up with something, you're good. Now, I did say tea can help, but personally, I only like iced tea, so I don't really know. I've only heard people say that, 
So take that at, with a grain of salt. Okay? Okay. Not gonna talk more about that because I, I don't know, personally. Uh, ooh, this one's cool. This one, oh, I have a story. I have a story about this one. Uh, stand up while singing. Cause see, when you're, when you're, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. When you're sitting down, when you're sitting down, okay? This is you, this is you sitting, okay? This is you sitting on this chair, okay? So when you're sitting, you're like restricting everything. Everything is like all crumpled up and you're not like, your lungs are like compressed. So like, you're not like, you know, your body's all kind of like, Whoo. that was such a bad representation. But essentially that's what's happening. Like you're not, like you're not projecting as much and you can't, you know, talk or sing to the extent that you can when you're standing. So when you're singing, if at all possible, unless it's in like your staging that you're supposed to be sitting, don't just decide, oh, you know, my staging says I'm supposed to be sitting. I'm going to stand up. Don't, don't do that. But if you can, and when you're practicing or whatever, stand up because your voice will sound so much better when you're standing and so will your vocal warm-ups. And I'm going to tell you this story. So I used to be part of this other acting group, okay? And so a bunch of little kids decided to, like younger kids, just younger little kids, whatever, uh, decided to join. And uh, they would protest. They would protest and they would make a whole like thing and complain about having to stand up to practice and to do vocal warm ups. Because all they wanted to do, all they wanted to do was sit. And you know, as an older kid at the time, I was probably like 14, 15 probably. Um, sorry, there's like a hair on my face and it keeps itching my nose and I can't see it in this camera. Um, anyways, so they kept complaining to the teacher. They were like, why do we have to stand up? I want to sit down, blah, 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 blah. And as an older kid, it was really annoying because I didn't see an issue with it. And I was like, guys, just it's just like a few minutes and you'll sound so much better if you do. And that really, really irritated me and, um... I understand their kids but like the way that they were getting on about it just made me like so irritated and as like an older kid like, there was only three of us that were like from like probably like 14 up to like 16 probably um we were all there like okay sure no problem they were all like and so then we were like running out of time to run our things and it just it was not a fun time for me uh, so yeah, it does help. I promise. You'll sound so much better. You can even try it yourself. Try singing something sitting down and then stand up and you'll sound so much better. You can probably hit notes better. Like, especially high notes. If, like, you struggle to hit high notes. Try standing up for a change. Maybe that might make a difference. I don't know. Uh, oh. Know when to take a break. If you start to feel, like right now, I can feel my voice, my throat starting to hurt from like just talking, right? So I should probably stop filming and go get a drink. But I'm not doing that right now because it's not that bad. But if your throat starts to hurt or your mouth starts to get dry, take a break. Don't force yourself. Or if your brain starts to hurt or you're exhausted, take a break. That's your body being like, hey, I physically cannot do this anymore. You need to stop. And as much as it might hurt you, you'd be like, oh my god, I don't feel like I'm going to be ready. If you push yourself, you're going to do more damage. If you take a break for, like, you know, a few hours for the rest of the day, whatever, you're going to be so much better off than if you just push yourself. Because if you push yourself, then maybe when your showtime comes, you won't even be able to sing or act or do whatever you're doing because you push yourself too far with your practicing or everything else. So... Know when to take a break. Know when you need a break. It's, it's, it's really important. Like, you don't want to cause vocal damage. Like, we use this, our vocal cords, all the time. Most of us do. I do. I, I talk way too much. I sing way too much. So, please. If it is hurting, please stop. Please take a break. Please. Take a break. Drink some water. Watch a YouTube video. Like, chill out for a little bit. 
and I promise you, you will be better off. I keep saying I promise you a lot. It's just because I feel like a lot of people are like, why would I do this? If you try it, it helps. Because for the first little bit, I didn't know about taking breaks and I would push myself, which is why I don't sing low a lot anymore. Or well, I don't really sing low anyways, but um, why I don't always love singing alto. <laughs> Because I'm a lot more of a higher voice singer, so when I sing low or too low or lower when I'm for longer periods of time, my throat starts to hurt because it's not really in my range. And so that's why I don't like doing that. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I kind of already touched about this, um, but I'll just bring it up again for a little minute. Uh, don't let your fear of messing up take over. If you're constantly worried about messing up, then you're going to mess up all the time. And like, yes, it's, it's like, I, I, I myself have a fear of messing up every single time I perform. Every single time. I'm always nervous. And I've been doing it, like, almost all my life. As I've done, you know, acting, I've done singing, I've done public speaking. I've done it just about it all. And every single time, I am absolutely nervous. I'm a nervous wreck. Every time. And everyone's like, Emma, why are you so nervous? I'm like, I don't know. Damn, it just happens, man. Um, but if you're worried about messing up, you're probably, if you're so worried about messing up, you're probably gonna mess up, just saying. It's not a, a guarantee, um, but you know, I've seen people that are worried about messing up or are nervous about performing, and then they, things happen that, you know, probably wouldn't have happened if they would've just been like, okay, if I mess up, I mess up, but it's all good. Um, and you know, I, I have always been anxious about messing up. Specifically, specifically, uh, saying words wrong. Because that is a real big struggle for me, quite honestly. Reading things and then trying to say what it is, because some, yeah. So don't let that be the thing that makes you stop doing something that you could enjoy. Or the reason why you're like, I can't do this. Or like, just don't let your fear take over in general. Like, if you're scared, it's okay to be scared and nervous and anxious. Like, it's okay. Just don't let that be the only thing. You gotta let it go. You gotta breathe. You gotta accept that it's okay. It's okay if that happens. It happens. Shit happens, man. You're only human. You're not programmed to do everything perfect. So don't expect to be perfect all the time. Um, oh, if you're worried about anything... Tell someone, tell, well, I'd say, like, specifically tell, you know, the, the people you're working with. Be like, hey, I'm worried about this specific part in my song, or this specific part of the script, or I don't know what choreo I'm doing here, or I don't know where I'm supposed to be. And if you're worried that I'm not going to get to my spot when I'm supposed to, or my, like, spike, or I'm going to miss my cue, or whatever, if you're worried about that, tell them, because they could help you. And they could be like, okay, maybe we can change it, or here is some advice for you not for you to get there, or to do this, or we can work on it extra, or if you can have extra time to hang out with me and we can work on it, or you can stay later, or come early, or whatever. Usually, if you just talk to them, they will try and help you, because all they want is for you to have a good time, and for there to be a great show. Um, sorry, my camera was being weird, so I had to stop and hit record again. I'm almost done anyway, so yeah, please. If something's going wrong, or you're worried, please tell them, because they will, they want to help. They just want to have a good show and make sure you have a good time. That's all they want. They're not there to, like, hurt you or bring you down or be mean. They're there to just have a good show. Honestly. Um, ooh, memorize in small pieces. So... I was given a really big monologue last Christmas for our Christmas concert. It was like three pages, like three or four full pages long. Um, and uh, the best way that I memorized the whole entire thing was not trying to memorize the whole entire thing right away. Take small sections, like a, you know, if it's a monologue, a real big monologue like that, take, you know, a few paragraphs at a time. Or if it's a script, maybe take three or four lines at a time, or a page at a time, whatever, like, you know, the layout of it is 
take it in smaller chunks because then you'll memorize it quicker and faster and you know it a lot better and you know your cues better you know all of it better if you just take it at small little tiny pieces instead of like being like I have to memorize all of this all at one time and I know that can be tempting because you just want to be so cool and so much better than everyone else and be like I can memorize everything it's not easy <laughs> it's not easy to memorize big things or things in general most of the time um, I just personally happen to be really good at memorizing things I don't know why, but I know lots of people that have a lot harder time with memorizing things or need lots more time to work on things or might need like to have their script hidden in case or something. You know, it happens. It happens. But yes, taking it at smaller chunks is very, 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 very helpful. Um, even like if you want to practice more on you know, like your smaller chunks, do it while you're in the car, in the shower, like tape your script up on your shower or have it recorded so you can listen to it like do whatever you have to do to get it done like you know I'm just telling you what I think is helpful because I had to learn all this myself and if you guys could hear it from someone and you could like you know be better off maybe I don't know but yes smaller chunks is so helpful and it's so much less stressful man like if I was just like like I had a thing. I was like, you know what? Today I want to memorize all of this, all of these two pages, and that's what I would work on for that day. And then once I got them, I said, okay, I'm gonna memorize all this page, and then I'm gonna try to do all the three pages together, and just add it on, like so forth and so on. So, yeah. Okay, this is the last one that I have for right now. Maybe I'll do a part two if I can remember more, and maybe I'll. Uh, I'll talk to some of my other acting, singing people that I know because I do have a bit of a bit of a circle of those people. I can ask them what they think, and maybe maybe even I could do a video with some of them. And we could talk about that. Um, yeah, that's a potential potential option. Um, but the last one is listen to the song or track or whatever all the time, all the time. Like half the time how I get so good at hitting notes in songs or um, like memorizing them even or knowing what my cues are is because I listen to a song on repeat constantly way too much or I listen for like and when you listen to it a lot I mean is what I'm trying to get at when you end up listening to it a lot you'll hear things and you'll be like oh that's really cool like um for what was it oh it was uh, I was doing uh, Dear Evan Hansen and uh, I was doing the song Requiem and in a part there there's a violin that comes in and that was like what I used as a cue to know when I was supposed to sing or if I was like at the right part of the song so if I got to that word when the violin plays then I knew I was singing it correctly just little little things like that so when you listen to it a lot you'll pick up on like little things that you can use to like use as cues to know when you're gonna sing especially if you're going from uh, like the you know, the track with the lyrics and all that to just an instrumental track. Those things, like hearing the little background instruments and other noises that they have in it is really helpful for when you go to the instrumental track. Um, and even like when I was singing pop songs, like uh, figuring out what like the notes were or like the key change, listening to that all the time, just hearing <laughs> their voice in your ears is so helpful. That's like it just is. I don't know. Like, I, I mean, like, I just know, <laughs> I just know from listening to songs over and over and over again, I just pick up the lyrics really easily. I just, I'm sorry. I just can pick up things and know things and memorize things really easily, and I don't know why. I just, my brain is programmed like that. But listening to it on repeat, and I know it can get annoying. So, like, you know, listen to it as much as you can, but if you start to get annoyed from hearing the same thing over and over again, Play something else, do something else, but at least keep some hours of your day to listen to them and you'll get it. And it's really helpful. Um, it sounds dumb and it's gonna get annoying probably real fast, um, but they're listening to it. And especially if it's a catchy song, you'll be singing it all the time. Like the like a certain part of Candy Store from Heather's, I sing all the time. And if you're my friend, you know how much I sing that one part 
and I probably annoy you from singing that. Sorry. Um, literally, how a menace, how I am a menace to society, is by singing songs and getting it stuck in other people's heads. I do it all the time, and I'm like, <laughs> just because I am a radio station. There's one song playing in my head, and then I'll think of another song, and then it changes. Or somebody will say a word, and then it makes me think of a song, and I'll start singing that song. I'm always singing. There's always music in here. That That's all that's up here, is music. And stupid things. If you see me, and you just see me laughing, it's probably because I thought of something funny in my head. Um, and thinking of something funny, I just remember a picture of a piece of clothing that I took at that so stupid for the reason why I took a picture of it that I still haven't sent to some people. So I need to send that to them because I think it's funny. I'm not going to talk about it because not like it's inappropriate. It's just I don't need to talk about it. <laughs> just not important to this plot line. Not that there is a plot. What am I saying? I'm sorry. I'm going off on a tangent. Um, anyways. Yes, listen to it on repeat. Annoying, but helpful. So, everyone, those were my tips. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, if you would want a part two, if I can think of it, let me know. Okay.